Hi, my name is Theresa McKinnon. I'm a senior tutor for business and e-learning in the Language Centre and uh, I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about the development that I've been involved in over the last uh, seven years or so uh, in the Language Centre. Um, this really was to do with using technology in order to support language learning and uh, why did I decide to go down this route? You'll see I've subtitled this notes on doing the impossible. I didn't think it was impossible when I started, but I've discovered all sorts of impossibilities as I've gone on. Um, however, uh, we've got there, we've made changes, we've moved on. So why use technology to support language learning? Well, first of all, my group of language learners, I was responsible for a module called Learning French 3, which is an intermediate module in French. And our students tend to have a, a very rusty O-level or GCSE background, may not have done any French for a long, long time. And in my first uh, few years of teaching them, I discovered quite quickly that, in fact, uh, they really felt that two hours a week wasn't enough. Um, to make all the language progress that they would have liked to make. Um, so it was their feedback, really, that made me think, how can I support them further? Um, so their feedback came in the form of an end-of-term uh, uh, feedback form, uh, but also general conversations and chats with students as we went through the year. Um, so there were recognisable teaching constraints um, uh, that they clearly acknowledged um, and that I acknowledge too really that two hours a week is very little to uh, get your um, French really back up to speed and to get you using French as much as you'd like to. Um, but does that mean I have to do anything about it? Well, not necessarily. Everybody else has two hours a week exposure. So there was, it, it was necessary really before thinking about what I was going to do to address the student feedback, um, to think about what stakeholders might feel about me doing anything at all, um, and to talk to them. Uh, and in, on the whole, people felt, well, you know, if you, if you feel it's necessary, then you should do this. Um, so I started really to uh, uh, look at the other possibilities of extending um, the te teaching support to my students. So what I wanted to start with was what was out there? What did I have at my disposal? What technological tools did I already have at my disposal? Um, didn't have a budget, uh, so that sort of constrains you a little bit. So at that time, I was involved in the uh, uh, renewing of our uh, website. Um, and uh, in, in my business capacity, I was involved in that. So I was aware of and was using uh, Site Builder. Uh, so I knew there were possibilities there. Um, I also knew of the forums uh, at Warwick. Uh, so those were obvious tools that I could uh, bring to play in order to facilitate some sort of uh, additional online support uh, for, for students. Um, now, I also had to think a little bit about what constituted reasonable investment. I wanted to think about how much time was reasonable to spend uh, for this two hours a week of teaching time. Uh, and I decided, well, if it's, if it's embedded within my learning, within my normal teaching delivery, uh, then it's reasonable to spend a proportion of my planning and preparation time on uh, developing and maintaining some sort of uh, online support for students in my group. Um, obviously, these sort of things are a bit uh, front-loaded uh, when you start to think about them and start to plan them. Uh, and, and there's a review process. But this is all the same as reviewing your usual teaching materials on a year-to-year -year basis, and perhaps putting in additional planning and materials creation in the, over the summer period or over holiday period. So having thought very carefully about what was reasonable investment and decided really that the tools that I wanted to use uh, needed a minimum amount of uh, maintenance 
uh, and wanted lots and lots of uh, uh, return on that investment, um, I started uh, putting together a page underneath uh, my existing uh, French 3 site. So French 3 already had a brochure page. All our students are encouraged to look at that to get details there of the course content and the uh, various aspects of the course they'll be covering once they start. Um, and what I decided I would do was to insert some pages beneath that brochure page. Um, and it, within that, insert a forum uh, for students to exchange messages for me to post things and send things out. Um, so a discussion area. And additional content using links and inserting media and using the various facilities of Site Builder. Um, now, that was all very well. The students needed to sign in in order to be able to see it, and that was a necessary discipline, really, that students uh, needed to become used to anyway. But I also wanted that site not to be a static source of information, but to be a dynamic source, to be useful at the time when it was needed and to foster uh, the creation of a community of students who were taking French 3, not just the groups that I was teaching, but all the students that were going through that module uh, to make sure there was parity there of uh, delivery. Um, so with those things in mind, um, I set about uh, a French online site. Now, it's uh, Increasingly, it became, I became very aware that it would take a lot of time to manage this. Uh, so what I decided to do, choose another color for this, was to create an archive page. And that archive page sat underneath my online site. And that's where I stored all my links or interesting content uh, and just sort of weeded them out every now and again. So I could literally copy and paste bits from that archive page into the main page um, so students saw it as and when they needed to see it. And I think that whole timing uh, element was important. Um, the students went to the site on a regular basis as part of their homework anyway. They accessed it. Um, they would only have access to things that were useful at that time um, and maybe revision uh, for a period just before the exams. Uh, but they would have to go there and see it at that time. And if they found something that was particularly interesting uh, or useful to them, they could bookmark that and keep that separately. Uh, but the links would not stay there forever. They would be changing. The page would have to be dynamic um, in order to, to, in any way, recreate a, uh, a virtual learning environment, really, for the students, rather than just um, a, a brochure, a list of things. Um, so that was the practicalities, really. Now, I had already taken, uh, by 2005, I'd taken a, an e-learning award um, with what was then CAP, and became LDC. Um, so I was a bit aware, really, of the um, difficulties that can beset any online interaction with students or um, with each other. And um, really, very aware of the barriers for getting people involved in these early stages and how important it was to access uh, easily and for things to be motiva motivational. So I didn't want lots of negative uh, feedback and comments when I was uh, correcting people's um, written French on the, on the forum. Uh, I wanted it to be a positive experience. I wanted it to be a place they would come back to. I wanted it to be a place where they would also meet each other and socialize and where we would together exchange information. And really, it was those first three steps that I've, I've seen going on over the past few years in the French 3 site. Um, the knowledge construction, I expect, is going on, but I hope that's going on through the whole of the delivery and not just through the online site, because this is really blended learning. This is just uh, an addition to what's going on in the face-to-face -face environment as well. Um, and maybe the further steps as well are uh, developments for the future. Um, so being aware of those things, I found the site really starting to take shape and being received very well by students. And every year they would be asked to, to feed back on their uh, reflections, really, of using the technology as part of French 3. 
Um, and on the whole, they reflected very positively. And where there were sort of uh, comments on improvements or possible improvements, then I was able to make those. So year on year, the, the concept of the online uh, support has, uh, has improved. The one missing element for me um, was, in fact, the ability to speak to students and for them to listen to each other and speak to each other. So it was really very important um, to think about how that was going to happen. Uh, and I tried out a number of technologies. And uh, when I came across uh, a set of uh, voice tools delivered by Horizon Wimber, these were the ones that I felt offered the most to me. They're internet-based set of tools, um, and when you create them, they export to a, a web address, which you can then link to. Uh, and essentially, they, they have a very, sh a very shallow learning curve. They're very easy to learn. Uh, they're accessible. They deal with sound in a way that means that the sound will be smooth and not uh, staggered or buffered in any way, which, of course, for languages is particularly important. Um, and they produce, I'll show you just some of the things that we use them to create. Um, at the top here on the left, we've got a Wimber voice board. Our voice board is really a threaded message board, uh, but we've spoken rather than typed, although you can put text in as well. So this was a good way of concentrating perhaps on a topic and facilitating group work or um, topic work where students had to uh, put things together or reply to questions, reply to statements, they had to listen to them and uh, think about what they were going to say and then record it and post it up to the voice board so they could listen to each other. Uh, it's a nice way of actually showing over a period of time the students themselves how their accents had improved, how their pronunciation had improved uh, because the whole, uh, all the interactions are archived. Uh, you can even export individual interactions as, as um, WAV files if you want to and use them for other purposes if you wanted perhaps to illustrate to a student how they were speaking when they started and how they're speaking now. Um, you could do exactly that. Um, on the right hand side here you can see uh, an example of a voice email. This essentially is the same as an email but uh, you may notice here that you've got a set of uh, buttons or controls that look like tape recorder and that's because they are a tape recorder. Uh, so you can record uh, your voice and email it to a student or a group of students, or they can email each other. Again, all of the content is archived, so it's, it's all reusable language if you wanted to, or reviewable if you wanted to. Um, but it's very a very immediate way of, of sending language. the left hand side here. This is um, a tool that I used this year for the first time. And here it's all really about uh, um, voice conferencing. So here, literally, what I would do was to say to the students, OK, go to the Bahalong area, the chatting area, this time, at this, at this particular time. We'll meet up there. This was used on the run-up to the oral exams. And if you want to uh, uh, practice your oral, you can speak it through and we'll listen and we'll give some feedback and we'll improve it uh, and then you'll be able to uh, review it. Uh, and that's what happened. It was really very easy to, to use. Um, the students found it quite enjoyable and had very positive feedback on this one here. Uh, this was not a compulsory uh, activity. This was, uh, you're welcome to do this if you would like to. And uh, there were obviously opportunities within class time to do a similar face-to-face -face exercise. Uh, the students said they felt it was less scary than speaking face-to-face, -face, um, but it still gave them feedback on their speaking. Uh, and I found, certainly as a tutor, that I was focusing solely on what they were saying and how they were saying it, uh, and, and not being distracted by body language and everything else. Um, so a very useful tool for me personally, and I would certainly use it again. So this, this suite of tools really enabled me to add that missing part to the online site. So over the last um, th 
three years or so, I've been making use of some of these uh, voice tools within the online site to complement and to enhance some of the uh, work that's been going on. Uh, we have one other tool which is called the Live Classroom. Uh, that's where I'm archiving all of this interaction today. And that is just a, uh, a classroom with a whiteboard in cyberspace. Uh, so the, the screenshot you can see in front of you uh, includes on the right hand side the, uh, the console, the tutor console, um, but you would normally just see the whiteboard. And uh, it's similar to a classroom, you can interact and archive. Now we found that, or I have found that very useful. Um, particularly when we've had a lot of snow and not been able to get in where a lecture perhaps otherwise would have been cancelled and the students have been able to meet up in the live classroom and we've still managed to, to have a session. Um, um, missing two hours out of a 20 hour um, term is a big hole so you don't really want to do that. So it's really helpful um, to have live classroom which is also a Windows project. Um, so all together, when all of those tools are combined, you end up with something that looks like this, which is very basic. As you can see, it's just a web page. It's just a site builder web page. Um, so this is the client online site. It's our page privé. Uh, you can see at the, uh, towards the top here our forum. So there's a link there to the forum uh, that we get involved in very early on just to get everybody familiar with the site and ask them to do some homework tasks through the forum. And uh, essentially it's um, making that, making those links outside of the classroom between students. Uh, so they start to message each other and uh, recognize this community aspect really of, of learning language with each other. They're all from different departments, all from all over the university and actually all over the world. Um, so it's, uh, it's really nice to see those friendships develop and the support that they give each other. This is the site as it was at the end of the year. So you can see there's a lot of emphasis on exams and past papers. Obviously, it's not, uh, not always like that. It changes. Uh, Fraser Bear on the right here was responsible for recording the orals. Um, so this is just kept as a, a fun place to meet up and to find what you might need in order to practice uh, and support your progress within French 3. Um, that's what it looks like. Um, and every year, as I say, there's a reflection process that really is um, fed into by the student feedback. Now, this is this year's student feedback. Well, just two extracts, actually. And just to prove it is student feedback, I've left in a typo. Um, just in case, so you can see I didn't actually do this myself. I have been known to make the odd typo. Uh, so very positive feedback. And this year was the first year where we where it had a higher proportion of students um, putting themselves in the uh, experienced user bracket of technology. Because that's one of the aspects that I asked them to feed back on. Um, when I first started, about 50% of students claimed to be um, experienced users of technology. Um, this year it was um, near 90% and uh, essentially the students themselves therefore have greater expectations of the technology. So the challenge now having got to this stage is to review over the, over the summer holidays now and think about how I make this site more interactive, how I pass over some of the ownership of the site to the students themselves and perhaps set permissions within site builders for the students themselves to organize the, the pages and uh, to uh, have their own discussions and dialogues. So the content isn't entirely tutor driven, um, but is driven by them and the leads that they want to. It's a constant development cycle. And it, contributing really to uh, the improvement uh, and the changes in the site itself. So that essentially is uh, what I've been doing, uh, using technology to support and hopefully enhance language learning. Um, it isn't impossible, um, but it is challenging. 
and uh, you've really got to want to do it, I think, to uh, uh, very helpful and very interesting to see how students uh, have responded to your uh, basically setting or work. Um, and really just uh, written to that and owned a dialogue about what they do want uh, and how they want it uh, presented. And, and this is very much their medium. They are very used to uh, interacting these days uh, through a computer. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, thank you very much. And should you wish to uh, get in touch and ask any questions, we'll find out any more. Uh, my email address is c.mckinnon at Warwick. Um, so if you have any queries or questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you.